Hello blockheads! I hope you're as excited for this video as I am. I'm going to show you guys how to make your own digital marketplace that runs on blockchain that we like to call Blockshop. Get ready guys, it's going to be a lot of fun. This is the application that we're going to make today. This was the app I finished in the last video when I was trying to learn how to send near tokens. Um, so you have your cart here showing each of the items you want to buy as well as their corresponding prices. You can see your total here and your submit button for purchase. And on this side you have your, um, your options of items as well as their corresponding prices. And this little display shows the user what he currently has um, or what he's currently previously bought from, from this store. So I bought to hope some things. But I think this design can use some improvements, so I decided to show you guys how to make this brand new version where you have your user's inventory here, a new cart with a clear cart button, new items with some with a description, the price, and an add to cart button. Make it, make it a little more dedicated. And what's kind of fun is um, after you select the items you want to purchase, you make your purchase, you're going to see two butterflies and one ring. You're going to get a receipt letting the user know that their items have been purchased and that it has been added to the near blockchain, as well as another display showing you what the user has currently um, bought or previously bought in their inventory. So once we refresh the page, We're going to see the updated inventory here. This page is also made with React Bootstrap, so now it can display in a clean way both on mobile and the web browser. So this is the application we're going to make. I'm really excited and I'm ready to jump right in. Before we get started, I want you to make sure that you have Node.js installed. And we're going to be running in the React framework, so make sure you have an understanding of React.js. I personally won't be going over React in this video. I'm going to assume that you guys already know it, but I just want you guys to have this installed so we can progress forward smoothly. You're also going to want to have the Create Near app installed. We're going to be using this to essentially set up our workspace. I'll put a link in the description to the GitHub um, repository so you can follow the instructions there to get started on that. So I'm currently in Visual Studio Code. This is my preferred text editor. Um, you can open up whichever one you like, but I recommend um, Visual Studio Code to follow along. I'm going to open up my terminal. I'm going to run npx create near app dash dash front end is equal to react. And then the name of the project will be block shop or whatever you want to name the project. Hit enter. Just wait till it installs. And there you go. So we have our block shop folder in our, you know, part in our desired directory. Source file and just all the boilerplate code. If you don't do the dash dash front end, uh, dash, you know, dash dash front end is equal to react. It's going to default to vanilla JS. So you want to be sure to include that. If we navigate into the folder we just created, so CD block shop, you'll see we're in the current in the correct folder. And if we run yarn dev, a browser will open. So you, you can see that server is running at this port. Bring it over to my other screen. So you'll see this demo code, this demo um, this demo application um, runs. And sign in and sign out so they kind of build that for you which is nice right now i'm signed in as jerry but i imagine that this is the screen you're seeing instead so if this is the screen you're seeing um, that's perfectly fine don't worry about the signing in just yet we'll get to that later so now i want to get into some cleanup but before i do i want to encourage you guys to take a minute to familiarize yourself with to create a new app environment. Read through the comments, they're gonna really help you and kind of give you a sense of what's going on because I know there's a lot going on. But um, honestly, but honestly, through that, let's just um, jump right into the cleanup. 
So just highlight everything all the way down and hit delete. Add the closing tag. Inside of here, type in return, parentheses, and let's add a hello world. So key tag, hello world. We can come back to that. Hit save. Go into um, go into your source folder and open up utils.js. And here we're gonna keep the login and logout functions. We're gonna use this later. Those come preloaded with the application. Highlight this on submit function. Delete it. Uh, you can delete these, com these comments too, but you know there's comments. Um, delete the set greeting function and then the get greeting function. These are contract functions and they're located within these view methods and change method arrays to make them public and accessible to the user. Uh, we're gonna go over contract calls and contract functions a little bit later, but for now, just stick with me for this cleanup. Go into assembly, then main.ts, and get rid of the set greeting and get greeting contract calls, the contract functions, as well as this comment and uh, this default message variable. Hit save, hit save here, save your app.js, and uh, last cleanup area will be the global.css file. So we're just gonna take everything um, in this file and just get rid of it. Oh God, there we go. Yeah, just hit Control A, hit Delete. Um, we're gonna add the background color black for the body for now. We won't use um, this form of CSS throughout the video, but for now, I just want something just to kind of show us. Let's see, hashtag it that. that everything's working. Run your own dev if you, if you had stopped your, um... there we go. You should see hello world right here. If you see this, um, they know it's working. So we have our hello world message showing, which is good. But now I want to make the nav bar. So we go to react bootstrap.netfly.app. Click on get started. Um, you, you'll see npm install react bootstrap bootstrap. And when you type that into here, so npm install into your terminal react bootstrap boot oops strap. It's gonna go rather fast for me because I already have it installed. So once you do that, so just run this line, copy this, the link, um, you know everything in here under the CSS section. So go to the go to the index.html that's located within your source folder. Paste it into your um, index.html right here. Hit Control S. Now we're gonna go back to the website. You're gonna type in navbar here. So navbar. There we go, nav, nav bars. You're gonna scroll all the way down until you get to about, mm, get to right here. So right here, they're gonna show you this nav bar example. We're just gonna um, copy this and paste it in. Go to app.js, copy over hello world, hit control paste, hit control S, or command S, I keep saying control S. So save your documents, go back to this application here, oops. I forgot to run, um, restart the server. So uh, it didn't update because I forgot to restart the server. So type in yarn dev. It's gonna pull an error because we didn't import these tags. So, okay, cool. You should be seeing a black screen. You inspect it and you're gonna see like a bunch of errors, I assume. Yeah, so that's fine. So you're gonna go back into your app.js, type in import, curly braces. Um, you're gonna use these, you're gonna go through these, um, kind of like example here, just kind of use this as your as your um, guide and what to import, but we're not gonna use everything here, so I might actually clean up too. We're gonna type in navbar, comma, nav, 
drop down, and uh, just nav from React dash bootstrap. Uh, semicolon, command S. So errors go away. And you'll see your navbar appear up here. We're not going to use the lollies buttons. We're actually only, only going to have the title for the page and a login button. So let's go back through and delete what we don't need. So we don't need um, nav.link features. Don't need pricing. We don't need this entire nav drop down menu. We don't really need more deets. <laughs> as much as I love dank memes, we're going to replace this with login. And we're going to add an on click event listener. Type in console.log. Hello. Oh, and last but not least, we're going to rename this to block shop. So we're going to go back, and you see we have our login. You have block shop, you're going to inspect it, open up the JavaScript console, and type it and just click, ooh, I messed up. Oh yeah, yeah I'm sorry guys. Uh, make sure you uh, set this as a callback function. There you go, we're just, just going to run console.log, hello. So set this as a callback function. Save, click on login, and you should see hello. If I keep clicking on it, you can see that number kind of increasing. So, and there you go, that is our nav bar. So now to create the nav bar, I want to actually make the body deprecation. So I'm going to add I'm going to call for the container row and column from React Bootstrap. In container, I'm gonna have a row. Inside the row, I'm gonna have two columns. Inside the first column, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually have an options component. In this column, I'm gonna actually call for two more rows. This first row, we're gonna have our inventory. In the second row, we're gonna have our cart. And these will be our components. So as you save that, we're going to see options, inventory, and cart. So before we populate these components, I want to backtrack a little bit. We have imported this link from React Bootstrap to um, show the styles and show that we can see our nav bar all right and that everything looks okay, it's working. But I actually want to use SAS to um, design and modify our style sheets as well as modify our buttons um, since we're using React Bootstrap. So what we're going to do is you're going to download um, another snippet called Live SAS Compiler. So it's Live SAS Compiler, looks like this. Every day. Um, once you have that installed um, onto your VS Code, you're going to create a new folder called SCSS. In this new folder, we're going to make a new file called appstyles.scss. Um, before we do anything with this, I'm going to go to your settings here. Type in SASS, so SAS, and you're going to see live SAS compiler after you install that plugin. Go down to here where it says set your exported CSS styles, formats, and save locations. So edit settings in JSON. And here where it says save path, um, copy this right here where it says source slash CSS. What that's going to do is it's going to create a new file called CSS where all our SAS is going to compile to um, to create our one single CSS file or folder. But so after you have that setting modified and changed, 
Um, go back to your app.js and import a CSS slash app styles dot SCSS. Go back to the React. We're gonna go back to here. So go back to React Bootstrap, go to get started, scroll down, and import. Oops, sorry, copy this line here or under the SAS section. Go back to your file. Go back to your SCSS folder and then your appstyles.scss. Paste it in, hit save. So you see your CSS file is made, but nothing's in it right now, and that's okay. Gonna, gonna go back to your app.js file. Hit save here. I'm gonna check out our application. And everything went back to normal, everything's good and clear. When you, if you saw that, like, if you saw a minute ago, it was like not clear just because, let me show you. So we, so that line removed from index.html earlier. That was actually applying the styles to this page. Um, the steps we did, import the styles from your bootstrap folder. I mean, your node modules after you install React Bootstrap place it here. What this allows us to do is to modify different like default bootstrap styles. See ya. Are you leaving? Alright. So importing styles in this way will allow us to modify the native designs that come with React Bootstrap. We're gonna make these custom modifications here in our app styles.scss folder. Every modification you want to make has to be made above the import boot um, this import line we have here. You set body, background. We're gonna make it hashtag zero zero zero. It's gonna be black, for example. I'm gonna go back to my page. So we see this is byte currently, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this. And now it's black. So we can change our background here, which we've accomplished. So let's go back to global.css. We're gonna switch this body over to app. Um, period here. Get rid of this line. And let's get rid of these. I don't know if that was in yours or not, but. Gonna hit save, and we're gonna go back to my app.js and, and make sure our class name is still app, so it's good. So now we can see that our text is now white on a black background. So moving forward, we can actually start with making our components. So we're gonna go to our source folder, add another new folder called container. Add one more folder called components. And in our container, we're going to first let's make the options component. So let's start with one component at a time. Okay, and call this options.js. And here we're going to make this a class called RCC. So this is again React snippets. Um, if you want to download it, I don't know if anyone looked earlier, but uh, we can show you. So just uh, download React Code Snippets by Channel Post. How do you say last part, the last name? <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna butcher that. Uh, <laughs> so inside of here, so we're gonna actually make our options folder. So in our options component, we're gonna make a list of the items that we're gonna have on for sale. But essentially what we have here is a variable called list items. It holds a, an array of objects. So each of these objects, be sure to include the commas between each object. So in these objects, um, each one has a property called name, or we have one for the butterfly, the price, where say for the butterfly we have like 30 um, near tokens, a description, um, this one says like this butterfly has magical properties. What those are, who knows? Just buy it. <laughs> uh, 
and so on and so forth. Um, one for the blue ring, so maybe this ring can grant you protection somehow. I don't really know how. Uh, and a fire wing, and I think this used to belong to Icarus. I mean, oops. And what we actually want to do is pair a picture to each of these items. So we're going to um, find a way to display each of these items in our application. Um, and what I did up here is also kind of skipped ahead a little bit, but essentially um, you're, you're going to want to make sure to import the container and the row from React Bootstrap as well as the card, I think about it, as well as a card. So I want you guys to head on over to PNG Fuel. I'm going to run through one of these items. I'm going to have all the, the other items kind of like opened up already for you all. But type in Flaming Wing, um, or you can type in any item you want. It doesn't have to be these items. Click on the uh, Flaming Wing. Hit the download PNG for free. You should see your download initiate here. PNGfuel.com. Go back to your application and take some on Mac. So I'm just going to kind of skip ahead here. But if you're on um, Windows, you might have to do this by opening up your Windows Explorer and going to your downloads folder. But you can take your image and just drag it right into your assets folder or file. And rename this Fire Wing. So I'm going to do the same thing for the blue ring and the butterfly. Butterfly. Blue ring. Can this ring provide you with protection in some magical way? Just kind of want you to buy it. <laughs> okay, so every images. We're going to go back to our options.js file. We're going to call each of these images. So we're going to say import uh, blue, sorry, the blue ring. Blue ring from assets. Come on. Is that going to help me out here? Uh -huh. There we go. Assets blue ring.png. We're going to do this two more times. One for the, what I call that, fire wing. And one for a blind blue ring. Oh, Butterfly.png, uh, butterfly, blue ring, and fire wing. Copy the name here, so fire wing and butterfly. Now for each of these objects, we're gonna add these properties here. So I'm gonna call this property picture call the blue ring call the fire wing call the butterfly save see if there are any errors let's go back and check out the application yeah, it's all right nothing's super oh well, we didn't even call this yes yeah, it's not going to actually appear here <laughs> Okay, so everything's pretty good here. Let's keep going. So once we have our pictures imported, we're gonna move on to making the options component, like options body. Call container in here. Inside this container, we're gonna actually take advantage of the fact that this list items variable is an array and call some, use some curve braces for JSX call this dot list items or call map what map is going to do is going to return an array inside this array that's returning will be the row of items we're going to put on display so let's call x dot name save and we're going to go back to our app.js file import the options component from And down here we have our options placeholder. We're just gonna replace that with options. Let's go back and we can see the names of each of our items. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna to go to components, add a new file called items.js. Uh, here I'm just gonna do um, RCC 
and just turn this into a functional component. Get rid of render and just have return. And just to test if it works, I'm just gonna put item. Um, and save, so yeah, no errors, that's pretty good. So I'm gonna go over to options.js. And I wanna pass a few, um, few things into the item. So we're gonna get rid of next.name and put in item. I'm going to call item from the directory. So import uh, item from components slash items. That's items. Items. There we go. So we're gonna pass in all this information into each item, and each item will have its own design, um, but when populate with this information. So I'm gonna say name is equal to x.name, price is equal to x.price, and forgive me, I kinda of messed up here. There we go, so closing tag. Description is equal to x.description. Um, and image, let's do picture. Picture is equal to x.picture. So what we should see See, save an option, save this, that, the other thing. Refresh. There we go. So we see um, our list of three items here. Um, now I'm going to go into items.js. So inside the items.js file, I'm going to import um, a card. Oh, let's just do this. Okay, so a card and a button from. Uh, was it React Bootstrap? Save. And I also be sure to call the props um, in the argument of your function. And what I also want to do is I want to make a card. Um, I'm going to make a. I'm going to layer this card with an image. So say card dot image. And uh, you know, we don't need we don't need this. So. We can make a self-closing tag. So card.image, card.body. In body, we are, what are we gonna do? We are going to have a place for the description. So let's do card dot was it items? That's not card items. It is there you go card.title I cheated <laughs> but let's see card.text um, and so essentially what we're going to put in here is the title the name of the um, you know of our item for sale so we're going to just put um, see I think this is all we need but I'm gonna make sure before I before I move on. So card of text body. Oh yeah, then the price. So card dot title. Yeah. So we're gonna have our card image, um, the card body, the title, the name of the um, item on sale, the description of it, and then the price we're gonna put here. And I also want what else do I want? I want a button. I think a submit button or an add to cart button. So button. Let's 
tell us add to cart. We will get the props dot price. Ew. Got the braces. There we go. Props dot price. Like you're seeing that. Props dot description. Let's do another one. Oh gosh, there we go. Props dot name. And here in image we're gonna call for a source, and that source is gonna to equal to props dot picture. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to take everything, shift tab. Just kind of like seeing a little, a little meter. Um, I think that's everything we need. So let's save this and get rid of this because I'm not really using the component. Um, there we go. Let's go back over here. So you can see the image of our first one. Um, I'm not sure what's happening with these two. So I found a little bug um, that I want to point out. I forgot to add a picture property to these two objects. So now if I save them, cool. Uh, I think it's actually okay because I, I was playing around a little bit um, with making it work. So save. And there we go, okay. So now it looks more, it looks a little bit more centered. So that's good. Um, we can still improve these. We can change the, um, the locations button. Maybe like, we like put the center. Our description, I assume the text is was white. So we need to um, make that black. We have our functioning item. Goodbye. <laughs> So we're going to do a few things style-wise to make our cards look a little better. Um, for instance, buttons over to the left over here. There's, um, I think there is text here, right? Yep. <laughs> but it's just like, it's just white so we can't really see it. And the outer bodies of the cards are a little mismatched. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix some of the styling. Uh, first thing I want to do is I'm going to add a container. Add a little container just around the button. There we go. And then here we're going to add a row. Put that right there. And I'm just going to add to this row a class name. Oops. Class name is equal to, um, let's see. Let's forget this, this part. So I'm going to copy and paste this over here. So just pause the video here and copy what I've written here in the class name. So you can add class names to these React Huge Trap components. Or, or, yeah, components, container, row. Oh, yeah, we need row here. Let's call row. You can see the button moved to the center, so that's helpful. Um, all that does is so all that essentially everything I wrote there just centers an object or centers an item within a row. And now I'm going to go back. We're going to add some, it's going to rhythm's a little crazy, but also kind of fun. So we're going to add some SAS files. So vars.scss. We're going to use these SAS files to, um, to modify the design. I'm going to move my little head. Uh, modify design of our page in Manager CSS. So new file. Uh, let's make one for options. Let's do options. .scss. And you know what? We're not gonna um, we're gonna make these like um, independent files. We're gonna make these dependent files. So uh, for every, so we're gonna keep the app styles .scss as kind of like our main one. And going to 
add these little underscore marks to denote that these are just going to be like added on into um, another separate file. So when I save these, um, instead of the live SAS um, compiler throwing into a CSS file, it's just going to save independently and we're going to import these into one separate file. So let's import. Just go to options. I'm just going to paste this in here. So options, container, background color, margin, border radius, and some padding. Copy that. I'm um, going to just place it right in our options component. There we go. And put it right here. Let's put the div. Let's give it to the div. So class name is equal to that. Um, <coughs> it's not going to do much by itself because it's because something's actually being called here. So we're going to app styles and we're just going to above this import, we're going to call at import options, let's see, options dot scss. Actually, we don't even have to put that, we just put options. Let's see if it'll save. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We actually have to conclude it here. Okay. So inside our main um, SCSS folder, I'm actually going to make another new file. I'm just going to call block shop utils. Block shop util. .scss. I'm going to organize this is anytime I want to change a React component, I'm just going to use appstyles.scss to um, handle that change. And then for the block shop utils, it's going to handle like the stylings of my own personal um, component and layout. So when I save, um, yeah, when I save block shop.utils, I should see a file up here, here. So let's just see if that works. There we go. So the CSS file will be empty because there's nothing in it right now. Um, but this is just going to be essentially our hub for all of our different style sheets. So I'm just going to call everything into like this one location, essentially. So um, by everything, I mean like anything with like this underscore in front of it. So import, you call the vars first. You want to just import vars. Vars. And it was semicolon. Um, that's where we're gonna keep our common color schemes and variables. Then below that, and it has to be below that in VARs because I'm probably gonna call back to, to here every now and then. But uh, import options and a semicolon. So now what we're gonna end up seeing is we can actually um, we're gonna save this. Looking to here. Oh, okay, then save. Let's see. Import block shop. Import options. Let's see. Generated. Watching change detected. Change detected. Okay. Strange. Why are you not doing that? There we go. Okay, so uh, to save the options.scss file. <laughs> That'll be good. Um, so I'm gonna go to, uh, so now what's kind of cool about this is that I can just call this one CSS file, um, which is a little better for performance. Uh, there's gonna be like some discussion organization. Um, I mean, there's like a of different preferences on how CSS is typically organized. Uh, kind of experimenting back and forth between the two. So if I want to make a comment on that, on which they prefer, being like file organized, you know, component file base CSS, one CSS, um, one CSS file for every component. If you think that's better, I'm interested in hearing that and your reasons why. But I'm trying out this thing. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. So we just have to simply import this one CSS file. So import. Um, pap, 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 CSS slash block shop utils dot CSS. Um, save. 
and we can see the CSS that we actually did work. So we have like that the gray background from, from that style sheet as well as the padding um, and everything. So what I wanna add next is, I wanna see if we can like improve the spacing between the cards and also change the color of this text. Yeah, we can actually probably handle the color of the text right now. So let's just do, say, color black. Actually, you know what, I like doing that. Let's do hash 000. Okay. Save. Background color. Oh. Oh, okay, okay. Because I did not call this. Okay, so we're gonna say, oh no, there it goes. I know I did. I know I was just showing you now. <laughs> but there we go. I mean, we can actually see the text now. See the 30, like our, our price. Um, and yeah, we have each each and every description. It looks like I got the names mixed up because that's not definitely not a firefly. <laughs> it's not the blue ring. It's not the fire. So let's go back and fix that. Uh, options. What happened here? Picture butterfly. Oh, well. Okay. So let's just do blue ring. I have no idea how I messed this up so badly. There we go. Fire wing and butterfly. Can't spell butterfly. Uh, you know what? It might have actually been easier as to. Yeah, you know yeah. I missed. Somehow I messed up the, the the names. Okay, so let's do this instead. We should do butterfly. Uh, blue ring. Fire wing, okay. There we go. That looks good. So the last thing we need to do to wrap this up, ignore that, um, is to finish off our inventory. Um, so we can actually, so yeah, right now, um, the users can't exactly see like what they have and these things are just dummy items. Um, so it'd be nice to actually know what I already have in stock before, you know, before I um, before I buy anything else. So let's go over to inventory. We're gonna do some fancy lifecycle functions here. Let's get rid of our little test array again. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make we need we need a place to actually house the items we want, and also house their quantity and. Uh, yeah, that's essentially it. So let's make a constructor. Let's set this constructor and call this.state is equal to and inv name and inv quantity. What we want this to do is upon loading the screen, we want to load the, um, we want to populate the inventory div. So we're going to make use of uh, lifecycle, the lifecycle methods to, to do this. So we're going to need um, component did mount and component did update. So component, so component did mount component did mount component did update check if the window dot account ID is equal to you know an empty string or it's not equal to I'm sorry so so we're just checking for login like when this at when this component gets created and if it is logged in, meaning that's not equal to an empty string, we're, we're going to do this dot update or create a function called update in inventory. We're gonna call it function here. So this dot update in. Let's see, make an arrow function. There we go. So this dot update in. Else, no, nothing happens. 
Oh, uh, I don't know why there's these things here. Okay, no way, Siri. Inner update inventory function. We're going to call await window.contract. Uh, I don't know why I keep saying that. Get inventory. Remember, it's a capital I, I bet. It's an asynchronous function, so we can use dot then to handle the results. Result. We're gonna say, we're gonna check if res is, e is not equal to undefined, meaning we actually have the inventory there. We are going to set the state, set state. So in to the result, meaning that we're gonna get an array of the items that we recently purchased and set that as a new array for user INV. Um, also remember to close this in curly braces because it's, a, it's typically an object. Return no. INVs for organizing the inventory. So this function, so if this first function was just to get the main inventory, this next function is to count out how many of each unique items there are, and then spit them out in a nice and organized way. So this function just gets like a raw list of the items we have in our inventory. And then um, this organized function actually organizes them into count by name. So. Let names equal to empty array. Let quantity equal to an empty array. And this dot state dot user inv. Uh, we're gonna call the for each function on it. And let's see. So for each item, if names dot includes um, so if names dot includes or if we have x <laughs> um, we're going to run the following function here say qty dot names index of x so we're pulling the index of um, the we're like you know so should this item already exist in our names list we're gonna find where the item is and make a corresponding index call to a quantity array. Qty names dot index of x. Um, and then all we're gonna do is we're gonna add one to that list. So we're adding one quantity for every time we find uh, an existing item. Else names dot push x, meaning that like if the name isn't there, we're gonna add the name, and qty dot push one. So we're just adding one to that. Um, let's see. So now in component did update. We get two arguments typically. So we get previous props, prev props, and prev state. We're gonna say if the previous state, or actually I'm gonna finish this and explain it. <laughs> okay, so we're looking for essentially a change in the state, particularly for the property user inventory. We just wanna see if we actually received our raw inventory. Um, this is gonna determine whether or not the organization function gets called. So this.org in. So we have an error. Oh, we did make this an async function. There we go. Okay. So now, all I'll do is modify our actual output display. See if it actually works. So we can say this.state. Dot IV name dot map. Um, so for every X, we're gonna get like a list of names. So you're gonna say return list group item X. 
and just do x meaning or with quantity maybe I don't know. Let's do colon. So let's return. Let's get our map with our x and our index. We're gonna say this dot state dot uh, inv inv qty index. And that should do it. Let's see, let's save. Let's see if we get any errors. Boop, boop. Looks like we got an error, so let's just see what error that was. Oh, uh, okay. So uh, just call super props. I think this is deprecated, so I don't know why it throws me this error, but it's fine. Okay, there we go. Just call super props in a constructor, then it will stop screaming at you. So user inventory. This dot, we have to set the state, you have to have them. So you create these arrays, but we're doing nothing with them. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is do something with them. I'm gonna say inv name, equal to names, inv qty is qty. So we're setting the state variables with these new variables, with these new array variables. So now we should see our array pop up. So these are so these items are unique because I was just randomly adding them while checking functionality of the application. So if I do window dot contract, I think I showed you guys this earlier, but it's still always fun. So deliver products, check out, oh no, check out a uh, fish, <laughs> wait. So then after I threw in a fish into our inventory, get a free fish, refresh the page. It's gonna call the inventory and there's our fish. We have one fish. But yeah, I, this is essentially our fully functioning application. And, and yeah, this is, now you have your very own functioning block job. Good job guys. Everyone, thank you so much for watching this tutorial on how to create Blogshop. I hope you had fun with it. I want to see your creative twist and version of Blogshop, so send me a link to your GitHub repository in the email provided below. Um, and I want to make a video in the future to show off my favorite versions of Blogshop um, on this page. So I think it'll be a lot of fun, and I think we're going to have a great time with that. Like, subscribe, and comment below on what you'd like to see in the future and what I can do to improve this content to make it better for you guys. As usual, stay innovative, stay creative, and have a great day, guys.